Charo with EWMS here for our first video in a series of 10 to help our members with any skills they may have doubts about. I'm Gus Godley, I'm the Member Services Coordinator here at EWMS. Tonight we're going to talk about glucometry um, and diabetic emergencies associated with that. Here we have all of our equipment to start off with. Our glucometer, Landsats, test strips, glucose, tongue depressor, gauze pad, alcohol preps, and band-aids. Over here, Gus is having a diabetic emergency. Um, some signs of hypoglycemia would be uh, fatigue, hunger, confusion, uh, aggressiveness, sweating, uh, tachycardia, and just overall anxiety. If it progresses too far, he could go into a diabetic seizure, go into a coma, or just lose consciousness. So the first step, as always, scene safety BSI, make sure your gloves are on. We're going to be dealing with blood here, so you want to make sure that you protect yourself first. Um, and the first step in this whole process here is to turn on your glucometer. All you have to do is take your test strip and insert it into the machine, and it'll turn on for us. After you've done that, you want to make sure that you sanitize the area properly so that there's no risk of infection. Now we're going to select our finger for glucometry. It doesn't matter which one you use, so you can ask your patient. It's nice to avoid the tips of the fingers, because that's where most of the nerves are, so it's probably going to hurt them a little more. And it's nice to use their non-dominant hand, just because there could be some tenderness or soreness over the next couple days. Right, so we're going to get the side of this finger here, their alcohol prep pad. Want to make sure that we let that dry, or else I could throw off our first reading. And we're going to prepare our lancet. So now that we've made sure our finger is dry, we're going to get the lancet ready. So we're going to twist and pull out. Put it right up against the finger and just press down. We're going to do our best to coax a little blood forward. Wipe away the first drop to make sure the area is dry and clean. And then our second drop is what we're going to use for the glucometry. When you first put the strip in, you'll see the test number. You need to wait until you see the little blood drop symbol. Right. So we're going to come up to the side of the blood drop and just let the tube pull it up. It only takes about five seconds to get an accurate reading. Your normal blood glucose levels will be between 80 and 120, depending on when the person last ate. Anything less than 70 is con considered hypoglycemic. Um, and in the Massachusetts State Protocols, anything less than 70, you should probably be giving them some oral glucose. So after we take our reading, Quick pressure with your, with your gauze pad should stop that bleeding, and then we're going to put a Band-Aid on. So because his blood glucose was normal, we aren't going to give him glucose today. Um, this is your tube of oral glucose. One dose equals one tube. So let's say our blood glucose reading was down around 50. We'd be giving Gus some glucose right now. Um, we want to make sure that he's able to swallow and protect his airway, because otherwise we could cause the patient to aspirate on our glucose, and then we have a bigger problem. The procedure for this is to open up your tube, Squeeze a little bit on the end of the stick, and then this is just going to be placed in between his teeth and his gums, and it'll absorb right into uh, mucosis membranes there and be absorbed into the bloodstream. While we're doing this, we want to make sure that the patient is able to swallow so that he doesn't uh, aspirate on any of this and you know cause and have any further complications. The, the effects of hypoglycemia can be very similar to that of an intoxicated patient. Um, so we want to make sure, especially if the patient is denying any alcohol, that we check their blood glucose levels and make sure that it's not a diabetic event as opposed to an alcohol-related event. After we've completed everything, we want to make sure that we properly dispose of our Lancet. So it's going to go in our red 
sharps container. All of the materials that contacted blood will be, need to be disposed of properly in a biohazard bag. Thanks for watching this educational video. We hope you learned something and hope that you join us again in the future.